Hello, my name is Johan Falke. I work in Node1 Scandinavia. This is a pretty short screencast um, uh, and pretty spontaneous one uh, showing you some cool stuff I did last night doodling around with rules and entity construction kits to mimic small parts of what you can find at a website called Khan Academy. Um, before going into that, this is a learning library. You've probably seen that the Node1 site has changed quite drastically in the last week or two. Uh, this is uh, the new look of the site and you can find the learning library over at dev.node1.se means that uh, this is a place that developers like um, and then hit the learning library tab. I hope you like it. Uh, so I want to uh, say a few words about the Khan Academy website which inspired me to, to do this stuff. It's a really cool pedagogical site with a lot of videos and instructions and stuff and also exercises. Uh, that could look like this. If you pick an exercise, uh, you get a question. What number could replace? And I guess eight is a good thing here. And I get some points for this and, and, uh, and a happy guy. So I wanted to do something similar to this in Drupal. I wanted to allow people to uh, write questions uh, post questions to a site that uh, other people can answer or try to answer. And that's a kind of tricky question, a tricky thing to do because um, as long as you're doing things like like this in Drupal where you enter one number and compare to a, uh, one exact number, that's pretty easy. Uh, but if you have like a, a text question uh, or something then people might spell differently or uh, use capital letters or or something and I would like to be able to evaluate uh, answers in very different ways depending on what kind of questions you have and I don't want to have people like doing crazy stuff in rules or I don't want to have people writing code into the site or something like that so what do I do well uh, I did something which I think is cool here is a Come back to this in a bit. This is a new entity I created by using the Entity Construction Kit, a cool module I started using first time yesterday. Uh, I have created two question entities right now, and they look like this. Um, I have two fields, or three fields actually. One is called Correct Answer, and allows for one single answer. One is called Answer Alternatives and allows for any number of answers that you can compare against. Let's try that. One, two, three. And here is a cool thing. Here's a reference to uh, rule components. Uh, and I've set up two condition components. This is a, a reaction rule that re shouldn't really be in this dropdown. But I can check either is equal to or is one of. And uh, my idea is that this selection here will hide and show some of these fields. So if you select here is equal to, you, you only see here the correct answer. If you select is one of, you get this instead. But that's, that's not really important right now. Let's just save this. So here I have a question entity. It's called one because it only gets a number. Uh, it has... Um, uh, an evaluation component, a rules component that it refers to, and it has uh, a set of answers that can be given to this question that, and be considered correct. Um, if I now create an answer to this, let's see, I only all already have a test answer, so I'm going to use that. And it here. My test answer, it refers to question one, this should be auto populate in the hidden. Uh, if I write something like Bazinga, yeah, I don't get any reaction here. But if I do write a correct answer, like 3, I should get an extra text here saying it is true. Yes, because I have a, um, a reaction rule doing something pretty cool here, and I'm going to show you what. In the workflow and rules, I have a reaction call, a rule called evaluate answer and that acts on saving content. This is just arbitrary right now. Uh, it checks that the node being saved has the, uh, a reference to a question. 
this is an entity reference as well from the uh, on the node type and it checks that this question has a reference to a rules component then it uses uh, a condition I wrote called evaluate a condition component allowing you to evaluate a, a dynamically chosen rules component from rules um, so if I edit this one it goes from the node to the question entity and on the question entity it uh, picks the component that was selected in that question for evaluating the answers. To that uh, component it sends along the, the node containing the answer. Uh, well, it, it sends along the answer, the node containing the answer and also the question belonging to this node that it tries to answer. And then uh, the component just evaluates, evaluates this and returns true or false. And I'm going to show you what that looks like as well. I have created two components. There are condition sets. If we look at this, is one of component here. We have uh, first it checks that well, it it receives the question and the answer uh, as parameters. It checks that the question has the field multiple answers on it because it needs that to evaluate this condition. Um, the, this answer uh, and it checks that the answer has the field answer in it and then it checks if the list of multiple answers contains this answer and if so returns true and I could make this really complex add a lot of, of uh, uh, weird stuff to it like uh, doing loops and, and string comparisons and similar strings or, or whatever or that the, the answer has to be of a certain length or uh, whatever. I can do this as an administrator and then I create new condition components with it. So I have like 10 different condition components to select from and then users, ordinary users can, let's pick that one, just select which of this, these pre-configured components uh, to use for evaluation. So I can leverage the power of rules to create really complex um, uh, conditions if I want to, or ev evaluation components for, for the answers. And the users can just select from one of them and, and go. And I can also, since rules has access control for different components and stuff, uh, well, I guess <clears throat> I can limit this list and have like these two being shown when you start on the site. And when you grow more proficient in using this, these tools, you get more and more options to select what kind of evaluation component you want to use. And eventually, I guess you can also build, start building your own rule components, which will be cool. Right, that's it. Let's uh, say a few words about the Entity Construction Kit as well. Entity Construction Kit, a uh, new module, uh, not very used as you can see here, but it's pretty cool. It has an issue here. Uh, F. Mitzel uh, is a good guy. I started an issue here, credit to the ECK maintainers. Uh, if you like this module, please uh, let him or her know because uh, it's probably appreciated. Uh, that module allows you to create new entity types. So in structure here, I now have entity type. And you can see I have created one entity type called question. The question entity type has a question bundle. Let's have a quick look here at the question entity. It has some properties set and you can add more custom properties as well if you want to do that. Um, it has one bundle called question so that's kind of confusing. Uh, I have two entities of this bundle type and I have attached fields to it. So I have evaluation component here, that's an entity reference. Correct answer is a text field, and multiple answer that's a multiple text field. And as is usual with fieldable entities, I can select how to display these fields. Uh, yeah, Entity Construction Kit is a cool module because it gets you to start thinking about what you can do with entities and when you should use them, uh, which I find really cool. 
All right, let's see if this one has something now. Um, all right, that's it. Uh, this this video won't go onto the Node One uh, site because this is not a part of a learning series or something. This is just me doodling around uh, to see if I can make Drupal do cool stuff. And uh, what do you know? I can. That's fun. I hope you had. Uh, well, I hope this inspires you to do something, um, because that's kind of the purpose of it. See you in another screencast. Bye.